Hi, Oscar. How are you doing? Hola, Roberto, and welcome to a new episode of Venezuela in Focus, the only podcast in English directly from Venezuela, which is pretty difficult as it is. Uh, yesterday, we had no electricity. It seems that every day uh, we make a podcast, we have some kind of excuse. And unfortunately, uh, that's how we're living right now. There's no water in uh, many parts of Caracas. Uh, there's no electricity. Uh, there was a, a blackout yesterday in half the country. Um, but we're still going. How are you? Well, pretty good. Well, despite there is no electricity and no water, but well, we are getting used to it. But at the same time, that's, you know, the, the things we talk about, you know, the reality in Venezuela, because besides the situation yeah. concerning COVID-19 and all that, we have these political issues. And right now we have some other facts that are really important to mention. And let me tell you a personal story. I had no, my car was uh, not working for the past month or so. And I couldn't get a mechanic over here because of the quarantine. There's no, uh, P, there's no place open to fix it. Finally, I got it fixed, but now there's no gasoline. So I had less than a quarter tank. Yesterday, I finally went to my office uh, and to see Caracas the way it is. I had not seen it in, in more than a, over a month, a month and a half, I had not seen Caracas. And uh, there's hardly any cars on the street, obviously, because there's no gasoline. And uh, people are just, you know, in a pandemic. It really, the atmosphere is really harsh. Uh, everybody wearing masks, thank God. And, uh, and, every, and people that were out and about were walking, even in the highway, because there's no gasoline. So it has become, uh, you know, a difficulty to not have gasoline in times of, of crisis. And, uh, and we're seeing it now. But uh, fortunately, or unfortunately, I don't know what to say, our numbers uh, are low in terms of people infected and deaths. And uh, even though most of us are not believing what the government is saying, uh, we don't really have a notorious crisis with funeral homes or uh, um, cemeteries or deaths like in other countries in Latin America. And I suppose, uh, we discussed it in our last podcast, it's because we have um, not that many people coming into Venezuela before the pandemic uh, sprung. Well, I was reading a news, really, really interesting because they were saying that probably the, the, the virus and the effects were around November and December from last year. Have you read about it? Yes, uh, actually there was a story from Deutsche Welle uh, about a group of French people that had come from Wuhan in October and they had experienced symptoms very similar to COVID-19 and had recovered. Maybe some people even died and they didn't even know that it was because of COVID-19. Well, it's interesting because I remember in December, I was sick. I was two weeks in bed, totally. I couldn't move. So probably it was, it wasn't. I don't know. I, I, was, I, I recovered because I you know, stayed home during the two weeks without you know, going out and anything. So probably, who knows? It, it's really interesting and weird. Yeah, it is. Well, you know, last, uh, this year even, I, I've been sick as well uh, many times uh, with colds that were very odd because uh, of how long they lasted. And uh, uh, it's just very, been very, very weird times we're living in. Uh, and that's a lot to say for us Venezuelans because we've been living very weird times for the past 20 years. But this, uh, I think, is the weirdest. It is, it is. See, Oscar, there are two issues, two facts that I want to talk to, to you about it and probably to discuss so the people from outside Venezuela could understand and probably people from here. A couple of days ago, well, yesterday and the day before, we heard this news that the military force from Venezuela, they stopped an invasion that was, you know, led by Colombian government and the U.S. government and so on that was more or less that three or four boats, I don't remember exactly how many were there, but in different parts of the coast, one in Vargas, La Guaira, another one in Chuao in uh, Aragua. I heard that probably there was another boat, small boats, well, they mentioned it like the speed boats, but you see the pictures, they are small boats 
in Puerto La Cruz, and they detained and even killed a couple of you know people that they were they were coming to Venezuela to kill uh, Nicolas Maduro and so on. So you know the, the the military forces loyal to Maduro they stopped us and you know they they stopped the aggression. What do you think about it? Well, it, it, speaking of weird, I mean we did we <laughs> we don't. We, seem, we don't seem to uh, shed that uh, cape off of weird stories and news stories. And this especially coming out uh, this week um, with ex-green berets from uh, the U.S. coming into Venezuela um, to oust the Nicolas Maduro regime. Um, so uh, they were caught in La Guaira. And, they, and one was caught by fishermen in Chihuahua. And that was pretty interesting itself one of these boats. Now, this is led uh, by Silver Core USA, which is a security company based off in uh, Florida, uh, managed by, I forgot his name. He has such a weird name, Goudreau. Uh, he was interviewed by uh, Patricia Poleo, which is a, a very controversial journalist, uh, if I may say so, in uh, Miami, Venezuelan. And um, yeah, uh, apparently, uh, these, this covert operation came in uh, in boats, in little life rafts of boats, uh, to Alas Maduro, and they were caught. And what a terrible operation. I mean, it's, I mean whoever signed up to do this is oh, very and stupid. Come, and that's to come, to come from, from Colombia, no? from that uh, raft. Yeah. yeah. Well, very stupid, whoever. I mean, I feel sorry for those Americans that got caught. But they were very stupid, very dumb, really. Well, what I see is probably is all this a show. It is a sham, totally, you know, really, really, I don't know. I, I don't find even in Spanish, my mother tongue, a word for that. But in order to understand a little bit what's going on here. and Well, I think, the, I think the word is, I think the word is unbelievable. It's unbelievable that this uh, has happened because... The amount of idiocy <laughs> uh, or, or stupidity in these people is so great that you cannot say, I, I believe this. So it's unbelievable, um, but it is credible to an, a certain extent. Yes, but I, on the other hand, we have a real situation that there are some guys that were stopped, some of them were killed. There were some guns, probably, you know, they were not theirs, probably they were, you know, placed there. There are some facts. And the idea is to see what, far, what facts could be true and what facts could be, you know, being benefit, you know, the situation and the news, the treatment of this could be benefited to whom. So before studying the particular facts from today, yesterday, and the day before, I think it's important to have some, some notions of what of situation like this during you know the history the past history yeah and uh, definitely we're entering in the realm of speculation here because we just don't know the only people that we have to reference on these accounts is the government which has very low credibility uh not only by opposition standards but by world standards there are states um governments and countries in this world that do not believe a word this regime has to say. And with uh, very good reason, because they've been caught in a lot of lies. So um, there's low credibility in the government. And then there's this guy, Goudreau, uh, who leads the Silver Court USA organization, has been speaking for weeks about this operation. Uh, and just now we're uh, um, looking at what he's been saying. Uh, which is kind of kind of dumb to to be saying what he's going to do and what he's done. He says that there's already operatives in Venezuela uh, working uh, with this operation that they've planned. Um, he's been showing a document with uh, Juan Guaido's signature, saying that uh, he signed a contract with Silver Core USA to. Um, um, so that they can uh, uh, bring about this operation and uh, that they haven't been paid. And that's why he's speaking out now because they haven't been paid by the Juan Guaido government. Oh, it's, All just, this, uh, it's, it's, just, it's, just, 
it just feeds into the, op, the, the propaganda, the anti-American propaganda that the Venezuelan government needs to stay in power. So that's why uh, the only one that we've seen benefited here by this story is um, the Venezuelan government. Of course, it's going to benefit them if they caught the bad guys. Uh, or they caught the, of course, you know, uh, they're coming in Venezuela with uh, guns and, and, and ammunition. Of course, they're going to be the bad guys. They want their personal Bay of Peak invasion situation. So we, yes. we fought against, you know, the enemy that wanted to come to our country. And probably there are a lot of people, probably some serious, probably another dumb guys that believe that, you know, you have the, 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 the legal right to be crazy and to, you know, to speculate and to do whatever you want to do. And what well, did you see? Did you see the Navy SEAL that said that he had been contacted by Silver Corps to uh, do some medical work with this operation? And uh, he was almost convinced because he said, yeah, I, I do want uh, Venezuela to okay. have a change. But I did not think this was serious and I opted not to, to go embark on this mission. But let's do something before taking some, some of the real facts, because it's a fact that, you know, yeah, the, the boats are there, the guns are there, the people is there, there are some guys dead, there are some guys in prison, and there are some guys, you know, using this for, for uh, propaganda motives. So, but before that, I want to mention, because some of my family were asking me if I believe or not, if this was true or it was a show, and because some people, you know, appear on TV saying that they are on the position side and they, you know, and of course they were, you know, uh, supporting these actions. And there are some, some important things. I don't know if you have heard of this word that is called, or this uh, phrase that is called a false flag operation, flag operation. False flag operation. First time I hear of it, but please do explain because I'm just as confused as anybody. I've been called several times as well. I've tried to report on this. I'm also a journalist. It's really difficult to try and put into context and try to explain this with the facts that we have and with the low credibility of those giving the facts. Well, anyone who's watching this, I ask them probably if they go to Wikipedia and just put false flag, false flag and we'll see that a false flag is a covert operation designed to deceive. The deception creates the appearance of a particular party, group, or nation being responsible for some activity, disguising the actual source of responsibility. So mm -hmm. this is, remember that this kind of, you know, of, of clash of ideologies and political parties and even in war, it's not necessarily an open war operation. So you need, you know, to have some covers, you need some uh, intelligence, counterintelligence. Let's not forget about this guy, Cleaver Alcala, that he was, you know, with some messages a couple of days ago. And yeah. then, because he appeared like being, you know, right now uh, with the- well, he's, under, he's under US, he's under the US uh, government. Uh, uh, he's in prison over yes. there, isn't he? Yeah. He, he, he surrendered himself. He, he turned he surrendered in. himself, yeah. He handed himself in, yeah. So, but at that moment, remember that he was, you know, like at this moment, he uh, tries to, to collaborate with the opposition and stuff. So we'll see that probably that one of the means of the regime to infiltrate the opposition to create this, you know, situation. And some people could believe that they were doing, you know, uh, helping the opposition or whoever was going to be paid or whatever it comes. So probably it was true, but it was created by the same regime in order to what? To see what we're seeing at this moment. A couple mm -hmm. hours ago and probably yesterday, I, I, I don't even know what, what day it is. You know, the days go through and we don't know if it's- yeah, true. They go by. This yeah. is crazy. Anyway, the first week of May has been quite eventful because of this. And, uh, and yeah, it, it could be all a sham uh, or a, fal a false flag, which I think it's a very interesting concept. I think some of that we saw also between Russia and Ukraine. Remember when they uh, shot the plane down and nobody knew if it was 
uh, Ukrainian soldiers or it was pro-Russia Ukrainian uh, militia. Uh, I mean, part of that fake news, um, fake but real but credible news, that's something that we have to be very careful with in this new era. And uh, it, it benefits the government, the Venezuelan government, not only because uh, they can um, increase their propaganda, than their anti-American propaganda, but also because we're talking about this right now and we're not talking about the 47 uh, prisoners that are dead in the prison in Guanare, in the Llanos. And that's a very serious uh, um, fact that happened in this week as well. 47 prisoners died uh, because they weren't given uh, access to their families and they that's the only access they have to food because they're not feeding these people so apparently apparently this is all alleged because this is information that we get um through different people we don't know if the sources are credible uh, completely <coughs> excuse me it's not coronavirus uh but we also uh saw that in Petare, which is the largest uh, shanty town, barrio or flavela, you want to call it, uh, it's the largest one in Latin America. We have it here in Venezuela. Well, Petare has been for five days um, enduring uh, gang uh, violence between two gangs. Um, also, uh, that goes back to uh, the life in prison because some prisoners were, were released because of coronavirus. These prisoners went back to their homes, they took out their guns, and they wanted to form their gang back. There's another gang that has taken position in Petare, and they've been fighting it out through, uh, um, you know, just... Recovery, uh, to recover the power, to recover yeah. their power they had. Well, let to me recover their that. power, and they've been firing their guns, and people around the neighborhoods around the people in Petare I uh, haven't been able to sleep for days because of the I live, I live in war zone down there. And uh, the government has not said anything, not about the prisoners that died, not about the Petare-related uh, violence. So uh, they've always all been talking just about this invasion. Well, let, you, you mentioned a couple things there about Petare. I live nearby, and during all night, you can see all the, uh, the burst. The, the, the shot, the gunshots with, with, with rifles, with, with high potency rifle. It, it is during all night. So you see, tum, 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 all night, all night long. And you see that there is no presence of the military or the National Guard because I remember during, I don't know if it was 1989 or 98, no, no, 99, 18 or 19, when the uh, protest. Oh, there you see the National Guard and you see the, the fires, and, but now you don't see them around at all. And I see it from my window. And so they've taken they control, complete control of this, of the barrio. Uh, there's one in particular, uh, one gang leader uh, that's called uh, Wilox. Wilox? Is no. that right? I don't remember. I, I, I read it, but Wilexis, isn't it? Something like that? Wilexis, Wilexis. Yeah, kudos to his mother for giving him such a creative name. Uh, Wilexis, um, I guess it's a mix between Will and Alexis. Well, Wilexis uh, is one of the gang leaders, and uh, Maduro has said that he was contacted by the DEA, by the Department, uh, the Drug Enforcement uh, Associate Department, uh, DEA, to start a war in Petare. So now, after five or six days of war zone in Petare, we hear the president say, oh, it's the DEA's fault that these people are uh, firing their guns. Uh, we've, get, we've gotten a lot of uh, information from sources that say that this, this is gang-related violence because people were released from prison um, due to the coronavirus and they're just uh, wanting to recover their territory. Well, and that release from, from, the, from the prison well, we are not going to talk about it. It was not perfectly legally done no. because it, it wasn't it wasn't done by the court. Well, we know all the the, the, the situation about the, the, the prison and the prison and everything here in Venezuela, but it wasn't done during the, with the due process of law. Yeah, and the people. I mean, 
they didn't release any of the political prisoners or petty theft. They released the bad guys, you know, <laughs> apparently. And here we thought, oh, delinquency is, uh, is, is not a big of an issue now because there's bullets are so hard to come by and they're so expensive. And uh, I guess we were wrong. There is a lot of bullets in Petare still. If they can keep five days shooting at the air and at each other uh, constantly without any song. There are. See, you mentioned an, another interesting thing that is Russia. Russia effectively know how to work these operations and these false, uh, false flag operations. I've been reading here that even in 1788, they had a false flag operation. So they really know what they're, what they're talking about. They didn't really know how to deal with those waters. And let's mm -hmm. not forget, and you mentioned it too, the Ukraine situation, when, they, when Vladimir Putin, you know, declared war in Ukraine. So there were some bombings on some, you know, some buildings, some resident buildings. They were planted by the same regime. Yeah. So we're, we're, we'll see that, that that modus operandi works in here. Another thing that is important to consider is who benefits, to whom benefits all this. And when I mention it, all this is not only the supposed or the sham uh, or infructuous invasion, but all this media preparation, all this show, all this, you know, the guys tied up saying that the, the Guaido didn't uh, accomplish the payment of the services contracted. And I that means yes, kudos. Kudos to the, the people that are behind this because they have some imagination. I mean, it's, it's just like right out of Hollywood. Uh, it's like a movie operation, really. Uh, uh, but the only one that benefits is the government. And, and let me say this, uh, I am very worried right now because this gives leeway for the government to persecute opposition leaders and journalists, anybody that is against Uh, or critical of the regime or their actions, or even calls them a liar, is subject to persecution. So I, I see a much more dangerous Venezuela at this point. And, you know, it's, it was expected too, because they're cornered. They're cornered because there is no food, there is no medicine, there's no gasoline, there's no electricity, there's no water, there's no state. There's them, trying to hold on to power of a country that has absolutely no institutions, just loyalty to a regime that has guns. So they're cornered uh, legally. They're legally cornered. And uh, I just see that the situation is just going to worsen um, uh, in the next months and so. I guess, I guess, saying that you're saying it's going to be worse. And another thing important is, Uh, to whom benefits this. And I was going to tell you that there was, and then I thought there is a Latin sentence, a Latin phrase that means, that, that says, cui bono. And what's this cui bono? I also ask people to search on it on the internet. It's in English, to whom it's a benefit. It's a Latin phrase about identifying crime suspects. It expresses the view that crimes are oftentimes committed to benefit their perpetrators. So who benefits mm -hmm. from this? The regime. So we have to put our, 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 our eyes and our intentions to who gets benefits on this. Yeah. Why all gets benefits from well, this? Definitely. We, I mean, I'm expecting more of this, more chapters of this movie to develop uh, because they need the scandal. They need the show. That's Uh, where they thrive the best, uh, the regime. Uh, and uh, journalists have to report on it because they are facts. People are doing this stuff and people are dying uh, because of these operations. And uh, if it bleeds, it leads. And uh, we have to cover it. I mean, we can't shy away from it. It's hard to put it into context. It's hard to find a source uh, to say, who's saying the truth or not, but um, trying to make sense of living in Venezuela is um, a task that uh, is very challenging. 
And um, I like to thank everybody that watches and supports uh, this podcast. Um, we are going to try and put out as many as uh, we can uh, during these uh, difficult times. Um, and um, yeah, uh, it's very interesting times. Yes, there are interesting times and we'll see how this all this develops. And well, we hope that it ends good. I Like you're saying, I guess it, it's going to be worse during the few next days. And we'll see. See you, Oscar. Yeah. Well, and, and to leave on a positive note, uh, <laughs> uh, this time I did prepare a Venezuelan saying that we can translate into English. That's, and, the, uh, that's, that's the one that I was asking you. That it, it is being tough, but at the same time, well, you tell us. Well, uh, I've been thinking, and <laughs> it's, it's really difficult here in Venezuela to bring about change, positive change, to uh, what every Venezuelan wants, freedom and democracy and all that. Uh, so it's, I'm just saying it's harder to bring change to Venezuela than to kill a donkey with pinches. Más difícil que matar burro a pellizcos. And I just, I just find that hilarious because I can just imagine somebody trying to kill a donkey with just pinching him. Well, Oscar, I hope we can, you know, finish this and upload it and, uh, you know, stream it. I do too. And thank you very much, uh, Roberto, for doing this. Uh, keep safe. And uh, until next time, hopefully uh, in a week or so. Perfect. See you then, Oscar. Ciao. Hasta luego. Ciao.